I can see where you're headed with this. You're going to spend some time warming your way into my head, pretending like you're just making conversation, while whoever the hell you have tying your shoes for you in this trash heap makes a pot of tea. You're going to demonize me, try to make me doubt myself, but most of all, you're going to make Mokuba doubt me, just to watch me squirm. Tell me, Von Schroeder, how close am I? How close do you need to be, my dear friend? If you're aiming to piss me off, you've already done that. I'm aiming at your brother's spinal cord. Oh, you think you have me? You think you've figured everything out to the letter? Every move planned, every strategy covered. You figure the more stupidly you act, the angrier I'll get. And that the angrier I get, the more likely I'll be to make a mistake. You want me to slip up and then pull the trigger, just so you can be absolutely certain I'll feel responsible for it. Oh, come now, Seto. Don't lie to me, and don't lie to yourself. Everyone here in this room knows that you're going to feel responsible no matter what happens here today. That, more than anything, is your weakness. It's not just that you love your brother. It's not just that you want to protect him. Your true Achilles heel is that whenever something does happen to poor little Mokuba, no matter who is at fault for the deed, you blame yourself. You take on the burden of guilt like a favorite coat, and woe betide anyone with the audacity to take it from you. For example, as I hear it told, Mokuba walked right into my little trap. How simple would it have been for him to avoid Adachi if only he had been paying attention? Why, if he'd only looked up? But you don't lay the blame at Mokuba's feet, do you? No, no, because why did he get into that vehicle? Because he was playing a game given to him by... Oh, who was it? Ah, that's right. You. And that's all you need to justify taking the blame, isn't it? It's just that simple to you, isn't it? I don't pretend to know why my brother ended up in this situation. I don't intend to press him for answers, either. I know only that this is the arena you've prepared, and you would have stopped at nothing until we were here. If Mokuba had evaded Sarawatari this time, you would have tried again and again and again. And whether it be a month from now or a year, eventually we would have been here having this conversation. So I find it difficult to care whose fault it is that it was today. He didn't want to have to talk this damn much. He would have liked it if talking had been unnecessary from the beginning. But Siegfried had anticipated that, and the sad fact of the matter was that there was no possible way for any shot he made to reach Siegfried without going straight through Mokuba. He was using the black-haired boy as a shield. A pale, shaking, terrified shield. The usual method wasn't going to work. He had to stall. He had to wait. You see there, little Kaiba? How easily your brother passes over the truth? You know how ridiculously easy it would have been to escape this entire fiasco, don't you? You know who to blame, don't you? The truth? Oh, you want to start discussing the truth, do you? That's a new trick for you, Von Schroeder. In my experience, you prefer to indulge in self-serving delusions. If I'm not mistaken, You've managed to rationalize your behavior today as a favor to me. A favor? To you? Now who's indulging in delusion, Seto? This isn't for you. No, no, not at all. If this is a favor to anyone, it's a favor to dear, darling little Mokuba. You'll see, young one. Just wait and see and I'll show you the truth. And when it's over, I'll save you from the truth. I'm not a serial killer, you know. I don't do this for enjoyment. It's amazing how easily you walk straight into your own hypocrisy. Siegfried was not so much an enemy in and of himself as he was an idea. He was a man who not only fought him, but reveled in it. So unused to this particular breed of adversary, Seto was losing his grip on his usual ironclad control. It was slow, and it was subtle, but it was steady. And for his part, Darren was sure, Siegfried was loving every moment of it. The detective made a slow, slight, almost step 
shift to the right. He had to take the opportunity as it presented itself. And if he could only get the right angle, he could end this charade before Siegfried's attention ever left his rival. Are you done playing the self-sacrificing martyr? You'll know when I'm done, Seto, my dear. Are you down to ignoring me now? Are you deflecting now? Because you know I'm right, and there's no use arguing. Do you realize now that you can't win with your normal tactics? If you want me to play this game, you'll have to provide me with some incentive. Isn't the incentive simple? The longer I talk to you, the longer your brother lives. But in the end, you intend to kill him. Of course. Then I say again, provide me with some incentive. What more incentive could you possibly need? Is time not important to you if it cannot be gauged in years? Months? Days? When is the cutoff point, Seto? When the time one has left becomes meaningless? I... I will not... bury my brother. Well, I'm sorry to say they have no choice in that matter, Seto. Unless you tend to keep his body as a statue for your front parlor. Do you know a taxidermist? Or would you just dip him in liquid gold? Apparently you didn't hear me, Von Schroeder. I heard you. I just know that you're lying. It would seem that you do not. Tell me, Seto, what pose would you pick for your statue? Would he be standing? Sitting down? Would he have his Game Boy? You'll be my statue, Von Schroeder, and you'll be on your knees, wrapped in tinfoil in my freezer. Such confidence! You see, Seto, this is why you're so vastly entertaining. Nothing ever gets under your skin, does it, old friend? No, you're quite the machine. When a task must be completed, there's nothing except that task isn't there. And right now, you're thinking that this task would be to kill me. Kill me quickly. Kill me before I cause any damage. And everything will be fine. Not at all. The task I had in mind was to sit down and have a mug of coffee. Why do you insist on drawing out this melodrama? Is this fun to you? You're all the same. Empty threats. You hold out the possibility of hurting my brother so that I'll dance on your strings. We both know that I'm not here to make you dance, Seto. But the big question remains, do you intend to call my bluff? Are you willing to take that chance? Are you willing to wedge your brother's life on that chance? That wasn't deep enough for you. Darren thought savagely. What are you after, Von Schroeder? What is the point of all of this? You claim to accept that I'm going to kill you, smart smarter than others, but at the same time, hopelessly stupid. Acting without reason is more than stupid, it's the definition of insanity. Hmm, we've been through this already, Seto. You have your answer. Take it. You're not going to get a better one from me. You can just assume that I'm driven by the simple desire to see you suffer. Why him, then? Why not aim the gun at me? Collateral damage, I'm afraid. I am sorry, little one. You are a fine boy, and I do despair to see you caught in this, and only for the crime of being tied to this man. If it is any consolation, know that you are loved. That is why you are here, after all. You do love your brother quite deeply, don't you, Seto? You should tell him, you know. You should take the time to say goodbye. Shift to the right. Shift. Ah, <laughs> yes! You are well-trained, aren't you, Detective? I've heard of you. So quiet yet calm, so subtle. Yes, you must be thinking, if you can just get the right angle, why, you might just be able to take me down before I even realize it. And you think that maybe, just maybe, even if I do manage to pull the trigger, perhaps it won't kill him? Perhaps you hope against hope it will only cripple him. Perhaps you will throw off my aim and it will only graze him. Yes. <laughs> well now, perhaps. He switched his weapon from his right hand to his left, sliding it so that it never lost contact with its target, and knelt down. Reaching up and around with his free hand, Siegfried slid his arm up under Mokuba's and almost tenderly gripped the boy's chin. Grinning pleasantly, he forced Mokuba's mouth open just enough for the cold metal barrel to fit. 